my lovely, lovely, lovely imps. Today we are going to talk about a, uh, a person, a person by the name of Hunter Avalon. Now, Hunter has a complicated history online, and Hunter and I actually have a history online, and I'm going to tell you that history before we get into this, because I think it will make this entire thing more interesting. Excuse me, hiccups. Uh, that will make it more interesting. So, Hunter Avalon used to be a pretty prominent right-wing content creator, okay? Hunter Avalon was like the sort of like react anti-SJW type guy. He did a lot of videos like sort of like mocking random teenagers on TikTok for having green hair. He did a lot of that kind of stuff. And uh, he did that for a couple of years. And then he had a, uh, and then he left the right as is, which is what, what he called it. And uh, a lot of this was uh, in part thanks to uh, having a series of conversations with a really, really small left-wing content creator that I'm sure none of you know about by the name of Vosh. Um, Vosh had some conversations with Hunter, and over time, uh, Hunter found those arguments convincing and decided that he was going to leave the right. Now, when this happened, uh, I, I had qu quite a decent amount of, of respect for Hunter being willing to uh, take a financial hit, which no doubt he did. Uh, credit where credit is due. Hunter leaving the right was probably a very, very difficult uh, thing to do for him. And I wanted to show you something, okay? Because I, I really want you to understand where I'm coming from with this, okay? I'm going to show you something real quick. And I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to read it to you. Okay? So this is from some time ago. Uh, I left this comment literally years ago. Um, it says two years, but I think it's actually more than that. Let's take a look at this, okay? So here is Hunter Avalon's video, Why I Left the Right. There's Hunter Avalon right there, Why I Left the Right, okay? And I'm gonna scroll down here, and here, look at this, who's that? Do you see who that is? Oh my God, look at that, that's me. That says Demon Mama, two years ago. So this was when I had, this was pretty early on in my streaming career. And I saw Hunter Avalon's conversations with Vosh, and then I saw this video. And uh, I decided I was gonna comment. I'm gonna read you the comment real quick, okay? I'm a pretty contentious trans woman content creator online. I've had a lot of problems with your takes, but seeing this video is actually something kind of refreshing to see online. Vosh and Hyena, that's vermin, have both taught me a lot too. And if they think your heart is in the right place, I think I'm willing to give your content a chance. I won't be easy on you, but your story strikes a chord with me as someone who is now a well-researched lefty who grew up in a very religious right-wing environment. You guys know I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian cult. It was an incredibly intense experience that I had during childhood. I do wish you the best in your new direction. Being trans, I can understand the incredible freedom and the fear that can come from living and expressing genuinely. Obviously, political views are a little bit different, of course, but there are similarities. Congratulations on leaving the right. It was incredibly freeing for me back when I left the right too. Uh, because I did. It happened offline. I was not a content creator when I left the right. It, I left the right, you know, in my early 20s after realizing that the cult that I'd grown up in was horrendously toxic and had been abusing me and my family for a very long time. But I had no way of knowing that because I barely knew anything about the outside world. So I wrote this message two years ago, and the reason that I'm bringing this up is because I want you to understand that I have given Hunter Avalon a lot of charitability, okay? I'm gonna show you something else, okay? Which is, uh, real quick, let me bring this up, okay? This was back in May of, of 20, or sorry, uh, March of 2021, okay? March of last year, okay? Take a look at this, all right? This is, Hunter Avalon debating Lauren Southern. And this happened about a, a, a little bit less than a year ago. Now, here we go. I actually have some comments on here. Um, and I actually said both of those. Uh, I had two comments on this video. Now, I coached Hunter Avalon for this video. As in, when I say I coached, I sat in a call with Hunter Avalon for like two plus hours, went through his document, helped him build a better argument for debating with Lauren Southern, uh, specifically on trans issues. So once again, this is not a, uh, I just wanna make sure that you guys understand how far and charitable I was willing to go with Hunter 
uh, Avalon, okay? I went really, 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 really far trying to make sure that there was a bridge built with Hunter Avalon and all of that. Now, shortly after this debate happened, a number of events had occurred, okay? So the first thing that started happening was that Hunter was taking, was beginning to take a slightly different direction with his content. He was moving away from sort of general leftism, uh, his interest in general leftism, and instead started to sort of go towards, uh, let's call it progressive liberalism. Uh, he had joined and become, become involved in a particular debate space, uh, in a particular community that many of us know, uh, and so his content started to reflect that a little more. Then some of you might recall a little tidbit of my lore, which was that uh, in early 2021, I was a uh, turbo dog piled for a, uh, a for what people call the supply chains discourse. Sometimes they also call it the bathtub meth discourse. Sometimes they also call it the bathtub estrogen discourse. Sometimes they also call it the rise of Walter White. Sometimes they also call it the rise of Thanos. Sometimes they also call it the rise of Demon Mama. You know, there's various things like this. There's many, many names for this drama. Uh, and I want to just to summarize this real quick so that you understand the whole context of what of me and Hunter's relationship. Uh, I made a tweet in response to an argument uh, uh, that some people were having in which I said that uh, people should be prepared to have to work outside of uh, capitalist supply lines. And I said that people should start, if, if you are interested in medicine and you genuinely want to help uh, alleviate um, uh, alleviate the pain on communities that are currently placed on many, many people by uh, capitalist supply lines, by capitalist supply chains, which are for profit, uh, then people should learn chemistry. People should begin to uh, to purchase and store and and uh, stockpile uh, important lab materials. They should talk to rural doctors and rural healers who are already doing the work to you know take care of people outside of the capitalist supply chain. Uh, and of course, this was dogpiled to hell, including by Hunter Avalon. In fact. In a very strange move, Hunter Avalon actually completely blocked me over that tweet, which wasn't at him, which wasn't about him, which didn't have anything to do with him whatsoever. Now, another interesting thing happened at this time, okay, which is right after he, right around the time that he blocked me, a manifesto had been written about me and my partner, Doe. Um, this manifesto, uh, was nothing short of a harassment document, and there has been another one since then, uh, if I'm getting my timeline right. I, I forget sometimes how many manifestos have been written about me. Um, but the, the, uh, the manifesto had been written about me, and it had a lot to do, it fixated a lot on my partner Doe and its gender identity. For those who don't know, Doe uses it, its pronouns, and often jokingly, uh, not even jokingly, often refers uh, to its gender being inspired by deer. For example, Doe's name is Doe. Doe's name is actually Doe. And uh, and uh, it's very strange because uh, Hunter Avalon got super, super mad at my partner kind of out of nowhere. So you now see why I was telling you why for like multiple years, Hunter and I were not only on good terms, but I actually went out of my way to help Hunter for free, to be as supportive publicly as I could, even though my platform was smaller than his. Um, so he blocked me randomly at that point, and then he started doing all this weird stuff. And then, about a little over six months ago, he posted a video that was nothing short of just explicitly uh, denouncing xenogenders. Now, when he says xenogenders, he's very, very, very careless about what he means when he says xenogenders. This, of course, was uh, part of a massive dog pile on my partner, Doe, uh, who I mentioned before. Doe had, has been dog piled about the it, its pronouns, about uh, the, the vague concept of xenogender, even though I should note, Doe does not identify as xenogender. Doe has never used the term xenogender for itself. Um, it just talks about the fact, it's super ironic that Doe has become like 
a a symbol for xenogender, even though Doe has literally never uh, used that word to describe itself. Um, it just is named Doe and uses it its pronouns and sometimes uh, talks about how gender should be undone. Now, uh, Hunter has been banging this drum about xenogender people for the for some time, and it came back around very loudly uh, over the last couple of days. Um, and it's gotten, it's pretty fucking toxic, I've gotta say. Um, like, there's there's a whole lot that I wanna say about it. We're gonna watch what, what, what uh, Hunter Avalon actually said. But I have to say that on a meta level, I find it very fucking weird, okay? I find it really weird. I find it strange that somebody who is ostensibly a leftist now, somebody who ostensibly believes in trans rights, and somebody who ostensibly, as we're going to see, believes believes and supports non-binary people, would spend so much time and effort whipping up a harassment campaign. Not, not sorry, sorry, I shouldn't say harassment campaign here. Uh, that, that was... That was a mistake. Whipping up f anger over uh, over xenogender people. Uh, at most, xenogender people represent a a minority of a minority. Trans people represent a pretty uh, a, a minority faction. There's about one one percent of the world's population, give or take, are trans people. But xenogender people are probably I don't even know maybe one percent of that one percent. We're talking a hyper minority. Anybody who's watched my content for a long time should know I fucking hate bullies, okay? I hate bullies. I hate people who basically pick on other people for no other reason than they perceive a vulnerability and they want to get laughs out of it. I think that's one of the lowest things that you can do. Bullying somebody, you know, picking on someone because you perceive them to be weaker uh, uh, and that you can just get free laughs out of it uh, is like a, a really fucking shitty thing to do, especially, especially if that person has done no wrong whatsoever. And as it turns out, this is basically what has happened to the handful of people online um, who identify as uh, xenogender, who use the xenogender uh, terms, okay? Um, they are subject to an, a never-ending discourse, a wasteful, stupid, uh, underbaked discourse that is targeted directly at them, and it hooks into an actual harassment campaign that has been led by Kiwi Farms, by people like Destiny and his manifestos, uh, by other people associated with that community, on top of the the Republican uh, 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 surge towards trans genocide in America, okay? Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see how fucking weird it is to me that you would find it find the time of day to actually commit a lot of time to targeting and de and 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 delegitimizing people who are doing no harm, people who, as we are going to see, Hunter does not understand in the midst of a enormous. Uh, 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 nationwide campaign of harassment towards trans people. And if you don't believe me about that part, about the nationwide campaign against trans people, um, it, I have a whole video on it. It's called This Could Concern You. It has a picture of America with a trans flag over it. Super easy to find. Go check it out. Demon Mama, This Should Concern You. Um, and I, I lay out my entire case. Although I will point out that just later in this stream, uh, for those of you who are watching live and who aren't watching the video, uh, by the way, uh, like and subscribe if you're watching live now or if you're watching the video in the future. Give me your likes and your subscriptions and make sure you ring the bell, okay? There you go. There's the little plug. Uh, we're going to talk about later in this stream the uh, uh, the the fact that um, the, the fact that that like every single conservative news outlet right now is hyper fixated on trans people. And I have to say, I find it weird that Hunter Avalone fixates on trans people to this degree, okay? Now, a couple of days ago, a couple of days ago, um, there was, like I said, this discourse started. And in fact, um, Hunter Avalone uh, posted a random tweet, okay? Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and show you this tweet. Oh, I I forgot I'm blocked. I, I can't actually. I have to. We gotta do the old trick, okay? We gotta do the old trick, the old private window trick. Here we go, okay? Here we go. So 
randomly, he responded and said, I haven't watched the video or anything, but being against neo pronouns doesn't make you a bad person. Neo pronouns are pretty stupid, just like neo genders are illogical. Now, I know he kind of mixed up some of his terms there, but this sentiment is basically uh, people who are non-binary but don't but aren't non-binary in the way that I want are cringe or stupid or illogical. And of course, this was responded to by a very based person named Cherry who said, well, who made you the gender police? And then Hunter Avalon posted a main, like a, a quote tweet with two video clips. Xeno genders make no sense, not sorry. Now, I've seen some of his fans say, Hunter is learning, he's learning, okay? He's learning. But that's not the behavior of somebody who's learning. Going out of your way to be like, I'm not sorry, you're invalid, you're stupid and illogical, that's not learning. That's not like some sort of magnanimous act. Uh, it's actually agitating and targeting a hyper minority of people without even trying to understand them first. Now, he posted two clips here. And we are going to watch the video from which, or at least we're going to watch the segment of the video from which these are from. Uh, and uh, and we're going to talk about it a little bit because I have, boy, do I have a lot to say on this particular issue. So let me just get that up real quick and we're going to react to that in, uh, in real time, okay? All right, here we go. This is the first one. We're just going to watch the whole segment that he does on on uh, on xenogenders okay because i think it's i think this will be enlightening of abolishing here we go all right so here we go this is uh hunter avalon's video called hold on my hot take about gender i have a feeling it's not going to be a hot take i have a feeling it's going to be a cold take but you know what let's give it a chance shall we let's do it here we go ladies and gentlemen we are going to talk about gender Whew, i know it is such a controversial and heated topic at this point. What is gender? What is gender referring to? Wonder why. If, if even he can acknowledge that it's a heated and controversial topic, that begs the question, why? Why is it a controversial and heated topic? Could it be perhaps that there is a nationwide campaign to smear trans people of all types as mentally ill and groomers? Could it be that that's what's going on in the country right now? I guess the world will never know. Let's continue. It is a social construct. Does that mean gender can be anything? Does that mean gender is everything? How do we go about abolishing gender? These are all questions that people consistently ask and debate. Now, let me try to break down my argument the best I can, okay? One, I am in favor of abolishing gender. And when I say that, I don't- Okay. Point number one, and remember this imps, Hunter Avalon claims to be in favor of abolishing gender. Oh yes, we will take a look at this, exactly. We'll take a look at this, exactly. Thank you, Vermin. Here we go. Mean, condemn people for having certain gender roles or expressions or fitting into certain genders that we cult uh, culturally and socially recognize, okay? Ah! Now that was a little sneaky there. Did you catch it? Let's listen to it again. I want you to listen to this again very carefully, okay? Mean, condemn people for having certain gender We shouldn't condemn people for having certain gender roles or expressions roles or fitting or into expressions? certain genders that we cult uh, culturally and socially recognize, okay? That we culturally and socially recognize. Very interesting there. So I believe in gender abolition, However, I believe that people should not be bullied as long as they are behaving in a way that is culturally and socially recognized. As you can see, this video is off to an incredibly stupid start. The idea that you can claim to be a gender abolitionist and then in the literal same sentence, you can then say that only for genders that we socially and culturally recognize, that's what man and woman was. For most of history, those were the only accepted and recognized genders because 
most of the world lived under a a near Christ, a, a Christian near theocracy in which there are only two essential ways to be, the man and the woman. And if you violate those things, you are offending God. So this is a conservative argument. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to call Hunter Avalon uh, a conservative, but saying that you're a gender uh, a gender abolitionist, but that you believe that only genders that are socially and culturally recognized, it either has to mean that you you are so broad in your definition of socially and culturally recognized that of course xenogender people and neo pronouns would be totally acceptable, or it has to mean that you're bullshitting. You have to be saying that, oh, only if society deems it's okay. Very strange, very strange way to open his video. Let's go. What I mean by that is I want to abolish the forcefulness of gender. I want to abolish the idea that, oh, I just had a little boy, my little child born with a penis. Let's go ahead and stick him in front of a bunch of trucks and, you know, when he gets older, maybe make him feel a little bad if he starts liking girly shit. That's not allowed over here. I want to get rid of the enforcement of gender because I think that we can. Now, do we want to look at the tweets that he said before? Neo pronouns and neo genders are stupid and illogical. Not sorry. Doesn't that sound like he is actually doing exactly, literally exactly what he's condemning here? Doesn't it sound like he's like literally doing that thing? He's calling people stupid for the way that they identify, especially without even trying to understand their identity? Weird, let's continue. And realistically recognize that no matter what happens, gender will always exist and be a concept. It will. It is a result of human. Gender abolitionist. I want to abolish gender. Gender will always exist. Are you getting a little bit of hypocrisy or I haven't thought this through vibes? For now, I would I would like to say that it is a it is a matter of having not thought it through. However, however, given everything else that we've seen in this segment, you, you guys now understand why I did the sort of windup. I don't think this is just a matter of not understanding. I think that this is a definitive position. I'm not sorry for this position. Xenogenders, neo pronouns are invalid and stupid and illogical is what he said. Let's continue. Interaction and the way in which humans try and efficiently categorize people. There is no way that gender is just going to disappear entirely. What we can do is get rid of the forcefulness and the expectations that we associate with gender. By calling people who express their gender differently, stupid, illogical, and invalid, right? Right, is that how we do that, Hunter? Is that how you, how you do that? You wanna stop the enforcement by enforcing on people that you personally don't like? Seems, seems like a flaw in your logic. That is what we should be focusing on. Because you'll have people that say, well, I'm a, I'm a woman and I like to wear the, the pink dresses or I'm a boy. I like to play football with the other guys. That's fine. Yes, you do you, boo. Okay. The problem comes when I'm a boy and I like to wear dresses or I'm a boy and I don't want to play football. And then that boy is seen as less of a man. That's the problem. It is the abolishing of gendered expectations that I'm focused on, not abolishing gender entirely, because there's just always going the gender the gender abolitionist who doesn't want to abolish gender. Now I'm gonna take a minute here and I'm gonna explain what most people mean when they say that they want to abolish gender. When people say they want to abolish gender, um, they don't mean, de like, de obviously they don't mean deleting the word gender. I'm going to be a little charitable to Hunter here, and I'll say maybe that's what he meant. Maybe he means, no, oh, they're not, we're not going to delete the word gender. Obviously the word gender will exist because there's going to be historical documents, etc., etc. When people say they want to abolish gender, it means they want to get rid of gender as a meaningful social category whatsoever, because it's not one. Gender is a totally irrational social structure. Uh, 
there are all of these 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 things these stereotypes that are made about women these claims that are made about women there are all of these claims that are made about men there are all of these claims made about of the entire broad spectrum of non-binary identities and they're all bullshit because gender was not designed to explain reality. Gender was designed to create reality. It was designed to shape the way that we live our lives. The gender roles that we know, gender as we understand it now, was created to make sure that women stayed in the home doing the work so that men could go be soldiers and 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 work in the factories and go to war that's what it was done it was done to enforce the christian ideal of the family that's where this all comes from so when people say that they're a gender abolitionist it means they want to break that system down say why the hell are we trying to categorize and force people into various gender boxes why are we trying to police gender so much that's what gender abolitionism generally means. It doesn't actually just mean uh, not. It doesn't actually just mean telling boys that that they that they 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 can't you know wear a dress. That's not gender abolitionism. That's just like sort of bog standard progressivism. Because of course, if you go one step further, the the absurdity is revealed. Right? Like wh what is what is wrong with the idea? of telling a man that he can't wear a dress. Well, it's it, the 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 thing that's wrong with that idea is that a dre the idea that a dress is somehow a woman clothes. How does a clothes now have a gender? Do you see how ridiculous and illogical gender is in that way? Why does it why does a clothes have anything to do with your gender? And your gender is often tied in this society to your sex, even though we all know that nobody actually knows their sex. And also, people of all kinds of different sexes, from XX to XY to everything, the many intersex uh, in between, that all of these people dress and act and behave in all kinds of different ways. Again, the idea behind gender abolition is to treat the root cause. The idea that gender is an oppressive, and it is an oppressive structure that we are lo all locked into that it is a bad way of thinking about the world that constantly trying to think about everybody's gender all the time a thing that we completely made up and that is totally totally in service to a specific model of the family is an absurd concept that we should do away with so that people can be more free so that people can be more happy there you go let's continue going to be some kind of a concept of gender at least in any foreseeable future. That's the first thing. Just to be clear, so you guys know where, where I'm coming from here. The second thing is, and this is where it's going to start getting more controversial, there are certain people that, that support this idea of xenogenders, and they say that, well, anything can be a gender. They literally will tell you that. They'll tell you that if somebody identifies as a tree, then they are tree gender. There are problems with this. What? One... What separate? So, we're we're at the we're at the heart of the issue now. That he has some sort of set of problems with xenogender people, um, and I want to ask real quick. I want everybody to be thinking about this as we hear his response. Um, what makes somebody a woman? What makes somebody a man? What makes someone woman gender? What makes someone man gender? What would make somebody tree gender? And the truth is, that is a incredibly, uh, uh, it is, an, it is a, a, a question that will literally result in a cacophony of answers, all of which are totally in disagreement with one another. Uh, if you ask somebody, uh, uh, what, what makes woman gender? Some of them will tell you that it's dresses. Some of them will tell you that it's about genitals. Some of them will tell you it's about the role you play in society. Some of them will tell you that if it looks like a woman, it is a woman. Uh, that's the way that people will talk about it. You'll get a slew of answers. And of course, the reason for this is that man and woman were made up. They are man gender and woman gender. We don't say the gender part, but woman and man are literally just as made up as tree gender. There is, there is, they are abstractions. Do you understand? Woman and man are abstractions. There is no original woman. There is no original man. And even if there was, none of us would be that person because every woman is unique and different and none of them have all of the traits that make someone a woman gendered person. 
These are absurd concepts that don't serve us well. Keep that in mind when we go into this part. Let's hear what Hunter Avalon's problems with xenogenders are. Okay, let's go. Rates, if we're gonna go for the example of tree gender, what separates your gender from just something you like, an interest? Good question. That's a great question. What does separate gender? So if a woman is a woman because she dresses up a certain way and acts a certain way and fulfills certain roles, don't you feel that that's sort of just like personality affinity? Because it, it literally is. Most of the things that people point to when they're talking about gender are performative aspects of gender. They are expressions. They are forms of self-expression. I consider myself feminine because I dress and talk and act a certain way that I think this word fits well. These are abstractions, just like tree. Let's continue though. What separates it? What makes them different? What makes gender distinct? Well, it's a big foundational. Isn't that, isn't that a strange question to be asking? if you are a gender, so-called gender abolitionist. Anyway, let's continue. Part of themselves, okay? Your race can be a p foundational part of how you perceive yourself as well. I'm not white gender. Maybe you are. It's funny that he brings that up because I always make a joke on this show that there are, that there, there are people who happen to be white and there are white people. Uh, and the difference is the level of investment you have in your skin color. I would argue that people like white supremacists are white gendered. They may as well be. They dress a certain way to show off that they're white supremacists. They go to certain events. They behave certain things. They have certain public beliefs that they say out loud. It is. It's a form of expression that is honestly very difficult to disentangle from gender. Of course, all of this is true unless you take a position in which you believe that gender is intrinsically tied to sex, which is a totally different conversation because there are people who believe that out there. A lot of people, Christians believe that. Uh, the, the conservative movement as a whole believes that your sex is a predeterminative factor, that your sex tells you that you are not supposed to be in the workplace. Your sex tells you that you are weaker. Your sex tells you that you are stronger. We know, of course, scientifically and socially, that this is, of course, bullshit. There are strong women, there are short men, there are tall women, there are short women, there are uh, uh, women of all different types, women who are domineering and men who are very passive. This shit is all bullshit. The idea that gender and sex are tied together is completely nonsense. And I would assume that somebody who calls themselves a gender abolitionist would agree with that position. But it is a little bit odd when you have, when you hear him saying, uh, saying things like, well, what makes gender distinct and you can't identify as an abstract concept for your gender? Because if, if he's making the argument that you can't identify as an abstract concept for your gender, not only is he saying that, that woman and man are not abstract concepts, they are, but he's making the claim that there's something intrinsic and essential to those things, which to me would indicate that maybe Hunter hasn't quite actually fully developed his critique and his understanding of sex and gender. Let's continue. People aren't black gender. So what makes gender gender? What is gender referring to? Gender and this is where I'm going to get crucified for this, but I do not care. And if I hear a better argument, I will change my position, okay? But my understanding is that gender refers to how people perceive themselves and behave and express themselves in regards to what is culturally recognized as being masculine, feminine, on that type of spectrum. And So what he has just described here is a sex-based gender binary. Gender can only, in his mind, by his argument that he's presented here, refer to masculine and feminine. This is a binary model. There is masculine, there is feminine. And he's saying, well, you can mix them up. I, I think he talks about this a little bit, but you can mix them up a little bit, but, but don't talk about, don't name it anything else. It has to be masculine and feminine. And of course, we all know that masculine and feminine is tied to sex. 
Isn't that a strange fucking position for someone claiming to be a gender abolitionist to take? Let's continue. Then you have non-binary individuals who, again, are non-binary. Their gender exists as a gender because it is a rejection of the binary of gender. Again, it I don't understand how he can miss this. He just proposed a binary model where everything has to, where gender has to be related to masculine and feminine. Then he talks about non-binary people who reject the binary. They reject the idea that your expression is bound by masculine and feminine. This is not a hard concept to understand. Non-binary people aren't 50% masculine 50% feminine non-binary people are saying why the fuck would I try to cram myself into masculine versus feminine outside of the 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 lightest level of of sort of aesthetic flavoring like for example I often refer to myself as a non-binary trans woman and the reason for that is because I have affinity for certain aspects of what is called womanhood this is a, it, and I treat it as nothing more than aesthetics. And this translates in all of my arguments. This translates to all of the things I talk about. That I see woman as nothing more than a, a vague flavoring label that I happen to prefer. Anyway, kind of odd. Let's continue. In regards to masculine or feminine, this is why non-binary people try to present more androgynous. There we have it. But they don't. Some non-binary people are intentionally androgynous. Yes, some aim to be androgynous. They aim to balance that because that's the way they see themselves. But there's a lot of non-binary people out there in the world. Some non-binary people would be take a lot from what you would consider to be the mask side of things. Some non-binary people take a lot from what you would consider to be the femme side of things. Some non-binary people don't actually take much from any of them and decide to craft their own vision of their identity. We like to call these people non-binary. That is what gender refers to right now. Gender refers to something because if somebody says I am tree gender and I say why are you tree gender? What is different between being tree gender and then just having an interest or being, you know, something you're into? Like, is the what is the difference between what is the difference between being man gender and being woman gender? What what, what is what is the what 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 de defines man gender? What defines the gender of manhood? That question has been avoided this entire time. He talks about, it, it's funny, he, he harps on this tree gender thing. And it's funny because this is, it is literally reactionary. It is saying, what, tree, that's confusing to me. I don't like that. I need to strike back at that. But then not actually taking the time to go, well, wait a second, how, well, how would I even define man as a gender? Do, do you see, do you see what I'm getting at here? Do you see how it's like, it, it's literally sidestepping the core piece of the issue and as a result, his arguments are unintelligible? Car mechanic, car gender? No, interests, personality, hobbies are different from gender. But if they're different- How? Explain how they're different. How is, how is someone who identifies as a woman because they like pink, they like frilly soft things, they consider themselves feminine, those are words that they like to use for themselves, they like to participate in traditionally feminine things, uh, even somebody who rejects the gender binary as a whole but still identifies with those aspects, how is that any different than somebody saying, I really love trees, I'm going to let, I'm going to have my, I'm going to call my gender what I am inspired by? How is that any different? Like, I, 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 he never present, he, he so far has not presented a single argument to explain what is different about these things. And the secret is, there is no difference, of course. But we'll continue when we'll get there. Then gender has to mean something. Then gender must be talking about something. Or maybe there, you are a gender abolitionist and you recognize that gender means basically nothing. That gender has 
almost no actual intrinsic meaning, and the only meaning that gender has is assigned by various social claims. The, the, the bog standard gender abolitionist position, which you claim to be. And then you'll have people that say, well, I want to abolish gender, so I want to say that everything's gender now. That, that, that'll just destroy the word completely. Because now gender will be everything. One. I'm going to show you a product that proves that the, the standard American worldview is the belief that gender is everything. Ready? Hold on. Get ready. I'm bringing it up. Okay? Hold on. Here we go. It's going to blow your mind. All right? Get fucking ready. Hope you're ready for it. Are you ready? Here it comes. It's a jump scare. Take a look at that. I behold the dude wipes. Okay, this is a real product. You can go to any Walmart in America, and this is a like I said, it's in every Walmart in America. Newsflash: Americans gender everything. That's why people say that trucks are masculine and guns are masculine and knitting is feminine and pink is feminine. Even though there's no objective basis for this. This is why we have uh, pink wipes and dude wipes because Americans obsessively gender everything and it's complete and utter nonsense. You claiming to be a gender abolitionist should understand the basics of this, but clearly Hunter Avalon was much more preoccupied with trying to pick on his, he, he was stuck in, maybe, maybe it's an old habit of trying to make fun of people that he personally perceives as cringe and be a little bit of an internet bully for six months on the internet. Because keep in mind, this video is six months old, but he's posting about it fucking yesterday. Then now you've taken away gender from having any explanatory power, which I think is going to be at least detrimental in the short, short run. How? How is it going to be detrimental? How does removing the so-called explanatory power of gender hurt anyone? It has no explanatory power. Explain to me dude wipes. Why the fuck is a dude wipe even something that exists? It's a baby wipe that has been repackaged to rip off people like you. To, to fool people like you who believe that there is something spiritual about gender, that there is something intrinsic to your soul about what gender you are, that you need to have the dude wipes packaged in there, even though they are literally just baby wipes. They are aloe wipes that you could buy from the baby aisle, interestingly, for a tenth of the price. There's a little there's a little hack for you. You guys, you guys, you know, you want to have nice hygiene? Buy baby wipes. Baby wipes come in a box this big. They are designed for soft skin. They cost next to nothing. Those dude wipes will cost you six bucks for a single pack with 40 wipes in it. Super, super rip off. You're getting fucking ripped off. Let's continue. Second of all, you're doing this the hard way. Why are you now going to try and val uh, validate Xeno genders, which is more or less people that just want to be special and try to carve themselves out as being unique and different. That's an interesting interpretation. Do you see what I mean by saying that he's kind of like slipping into that old anti SJW, like I don't understand someone, so I'm just gonna call them cringe and that they're a special snowflake? You wanna know who's the real fucking special snowflake here, fucking Hunter? It's you. You're the special snowflake here. You have gone out and been like, I'm a gender abolitionist. I'm a gender abolitionist. Listen to me, hear my voice. Let me go on my giant platform on the internet and whine about a percentage of a percentage of people online who aren't harming anyone. You're the fucking snowflake, bro, bro. You're the fucking one going out of your way to pick on random small people so that you can get attention. Are you lonely? Is that it? Why does he care? If it's not, if, 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 if it's not just bullying, what the fuck is the harm that's going on here? At the cost of unironically delegitimizing uh, trans people who are currently fighting for their rights. I know that sounds like a conservative. How does it? Oh, God. Conservative argument, and it can be you because it is.
arguing that xenogender people who aren't hurting anybody, who just use a different set of pronouns, who just have a slightly, a let's be honest, a very, very mildly different interpretation of gender than other people are harming trans people is A, fucking insane. B, where's your fucking evidence? I already My know. sources that I made it the fuck up. And C, yes, it is a conservative argument. Yes, it fucking is. Used in bad faith. But in this regards, I don't need to deal right now with people on Twitter that are saying, you're transphobic if you don't recognize me as being vampire gender. Then shut the fuck up. Then shut the fuck up. If you don't want to deal with people trying to address the stupid ass uh, fucking head ass arguments that you make, then shut the fuck up. Who made you the fucking gender cop? Who asked for your fucking opinion on gender? No one did. You can't even get your own fucking identity right. You're fucking identity confused. You think you're a gender abolitionist, but you explicitly state in this video that you don't want to abolish gender. So maybe you're the one who needs to fucking sit down and shut up and read some fucking threads about this. What is the, he's got a fucking xeno gender. It's, it's fucking, uh, I identify as a political position that I don't hold. Let's continue. Furthermore, what is gender? It is about your self-perception and your behaviors in regards to what is masculine and feminine. Ah, interesting. In his, in, in the, the brilliant gender abolitionist position, the only things that they can be in reference to is masculine and feminine. This is a sex essentialist argument masquerading as a progressive argument. This is a conservative argument asserting that masculine and feminine are real concrete things that actually exist, not arbitrary social constructs, asserting that they are and saying that you are only valid if you build your gender with respect to those two things. An absurd argument. So you cannot perceive yourself as a tree, there is no legitimate perception one. Hold on a second. All right, we ready for this? We ready for this? I'm about to show you, I'm about to show you a cis person, a bare gender cis person. Let's do it. Look at them, they got their cute little bear outfits from Wildcoat. 2022 was a bear who's ready for new adventures. Can we do some Wildcoat meetups? It's gonna be unbearably amazing. Here's one called the Wild Wolf that lets you, these are not furries by the way, these are just a brand of, of that lets you dress up. Look, it even has little paw pads. It has paw gloves, flexible grippy paw mitten. Wolf, winter coat, ski coat, ski jacket, winter wear coat, winter fashion. Literally, people use animals and inanimate things all the fucking time. Everyone does this all the time. People do it all the time. In fact, uh-oh, uh-oh, my man, you got a panda on your shirt. Are you expressing public social affinity with a panda bear? Is that what's going on here? Because if so, you have committed the exact same crime that the that the that the the the, the, the xenogenders have. People identify. Have you guys ever heard of people? Uh, oh, here's a great one. What, do you guys know what they call like a uh, like a sexy older man? What is the term that people call a sexy older man? Does anybody know? Come on, somebody in chat, give it to me. You guys know? Ah, uh, yeah, a fox. A, a, a gray fox, a silver fox. Uh, some people are saying bear. A bear is a big guy, not necessarily older. But yes, a silver fox. And men often refer to themselves as silver fox. In fact, if I was to type in gray fox or silver fox into Google, I would probably get a hundred cishet blogs specifically about being an older man in the dating game. I bet we could do this right now. You guys can go test it in, in the chat right now. You go tell me if there's a hundred blogs that are called like the silver fox guide to, to scoring or whatever. It's literally, it's so common 
that that if you think about it for one second, you realize that all of this outrage about xenogenders completely blows apart. Because fucking the calling your patrons the gray wolves, people saying, "Oh yeah, we're the uh, we're the we're the gay, we're a, uh, you know, oh my god, sports teams. I'm a jaguar all the way, man. I'm a kraken all the way, bro. I'm a wildcat all the way, bro." People do it literally all the time. They're just not calling it gender when they do it that way. You're mad because xenogender people are correctly pointing out that gender is full of shit. And that if you can call yourself a woman because you like a fancy purse, then you can say that I'm wolf gender because wolves influence your public appearance and your public behavior. It's unbelievably common. can have themselves of being a tree. You can theorize what it would be like to be a tree, but you cannot actually have that internal experience the same way we do or the same way that trans people do in regards to gender. Damn, good thing that no one that you're talking about here is claiming to literally be a tree. It's super ironic. Again, I, I gave you guys the wind up because I wanted to point out that uh, there has been an insane amount of harassment directed at Doe simply because it calls itself Doe. Doe doesn't even call itself Xenogender. It just says very explicitly, I am heavily influenced by deers uh, in my, in my uh, expression, and people lost the fucking plot. And this is true about almost every single xenogender or uh, non-binary with neo-pronouns that I've ever met. I have literally never once in my life met someone who makes the claim that they are physically anything. If they did, they wouldn't be talking about gender anymore, would they? Anybody who is at the position of using neo-pronouns obviously is of the belief that gender is fucking bullshit. They are critiquing gender by say with with absurdism is what it is. It's a it's a form of abs I don't even I don't even like the term of absurdism, but that's what it is. It's pointing out the flaws in gender by saying why what what give me an actual argument as to why I can't say that my gender is best represented by foxes or by trees. It's a it's it's it, it exposes as as Hunter Avalon is now showing us now, that people have a problem with their perception of gender and that many people who claim to, uh, to not actually be sex essentialists are functionally sex essentialists. They don't have that same internal perception. And then people might say, well, what about like dear gender? You know, we have sort of social... In well, there's the, hey, look, now he's name dropping my partner. Isn't that curious? engagements with deers so now you're doing the opposite of gender abolition which now you're unironically saying everything is gender or everything is gendered i thought your goal here is to get rid of gender now you're going to tell me that well yeah trees actually do have gender that so thank goodness thank goodness that that uh that that hunter avalone has has come out against satire against critique He's, 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 he's totally come out against turning systems on their head. I'm sure that he does this all the, all the rest of the time, but yet when trans people, when non-binary people say, hey, you don't actually know what gender is. The entire world is gendered. There are man wipes and man razors, woman razors, woman cars, man cars in our society. We are forcibly gendered from the day that we are born. The doctor literally comes in and assigns us our gender when we are a baby, before we have even had any experiences or expressed ourselves in any way. And then somebody says, you should pay attention to the fact that everything is gendered anyway. I'm gonna gender it in my own way and then he freaks the fuck out. You can identify with. You're making more gender. You're adding gender where there was not previously gender. You are literally doing the opposite of abolishing gender. It's- Really? Is that true? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it true, if you think about it for one second, if gender and, and its current form demands a binary, gender in our society uh, has not moved away from the binary. There are men's rooms, women's rooms, men's clothes, women's clothes, men's cars, women's cars, blah, 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 blah. 
That is a binary. They argue that there are only two. If you refuse that assertion, by definition, you are not upholding gender. You are not making gender more gendery. You are breaking what people claim about gender. What Hunter Avalone is claiming about gender here. Hunter Avalone's gender abolitionist position is that everything has to be with regard to masculine or feminine. That is a binary motherfucking system. People who say, no, it doesn't. I can build my gender inspired by the sun. I can build my gender inspired by my friends. I can build my gender inspired by anything. Fuck you. It's not a binary. Is not making the gender binary worse. It's actively refusing it. It is an it is a a personal act, or rather I should say in many cases a public act of refu of refutation of this system. Completely contradictory. It does not make sense. And this is why I always say that gender needs to refer to something. You cannot say I'm tree gender, and that means now your gender is tree. Are trees masculine or feminine? Do we perceive them as being masculine or feminine? No. And if then you're going to say that actually we do, again, you're gendering things that didn't pre- F Femyaz says, no, I disagree with Hunter. He's advocating for gender to be bimodal, not binary. No, he's not. No, he isn't. That doesn't apply here. Bimodal refers to how you would graph gender expression. He is explicitly arguing that non-binary identities must refer to masculine and feminine. His argument is not for a bimodal system, which doesn't apply here because bimodal refers to how it is how you would graph out uh, assumptions of people's perception. He is arguing for a binary system. You might not think you might not like that, but that's what he's arguing. He might not intend that, but that's what he's arguing previously have gender. Gender exists as a social construct, but it is a social construct which regards to how you perceive yourself and how you behave and express yourself externally in regards to masculinity, femininity, or a complete rejection of that binary. But My man, okay, what does a rejection of that binary look like? I would love that. I, I would love to hear him illustrate what a rejection of the binary looks like that doesn't look identical to a xenogender. Or a neo-pronoun. It, it's, is a, is a rejection of the binary. Hell, even they, them, is, is a certain form of rejection of the binary, but uh, not to the same degree because, not that I'm saying, it, not to the same degree because they them is a pre-existing pronoun that is already seen as uh, compatible with the binary model. I'm not saying that that non-binary people who use they them are like less revolutionary. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying from a linguistic perspective. What what does it look like to reject the binary if it doesn't look like xenogender people who are saying, no, I refuse to pull from masculine and feminine. I define my I, my gender and my identity differently. I don't think he has an answer. I don't think he'll provide an answer. But regardless, it refers to some kind of view of masculinity or femininity. And finally, when a trans woman says they are a woman, they are a woman. If somebody says, I'm tree gender. Why? Why? When people say, I am a woman, we say you are a woman because we recognize that I, that this is an identity. This is an abstract identity that can be claimed for oneself. Why can't someone claim tree gender? Why can't someone claim deer gender? Why can't someone claim any gender that they so please? You are not a tree. Because a tree is not referring to a socially constructed gender identity the same way that Tree and tree gender aren't the same thing, are they? That woman or man is. So it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up at all. And I don't think that my position here is super fucking intense and crazy. Now, it might be to some dipshits on- No, it's fucking stupid, though. It is fucking stupid. And the fact that you're still banging on this drum after literally six months, and that you specifically bring up my partner, who was the target of a massive fucking hate campaign by a social group that you associate with, that makes it a little different, doesn't it? It does kind of push it into that fucked up category, doesn't it? 
Twitter, and that's fine. But for the most part, what I'm saying here completely encompasses the validity of trans people and the validity of non-binary people, while also recognizing that gender cannot simultaneously be nothing and everything while you want to abolish gender. And you're right, Ben Shapiro's wife identifies as a doctor. That's a good point. So what separates... Here we go, everybody. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a galaxy brain take. Let's just let him wind up again. This is about to be a galaxy brain take. ...that gender cannot simultaneously be nothing and everything while you want to abolish gender. And you're right, Ben Shapiro's wife identifies as a doctor. That's a good point. So what separates an identity in line with your career as opposed to a gender identity? What makes it different? If you're going to answer that question, you need to have an, a, an understanding of what gender refers to. When I say, I identify as a doctor, that means that you have a career and a profession essentially validates your prof uh, uh, prof Wow. He, he, he doesn't even know that he's explaining the difference to himself while getting offended. Saying, I am a doctor is a claim of expertise. It is not a claim of expression. It, 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 it never is going to be. I mean, actually, there are some fraud doctors out there like Dr. Oz, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Phil. Those guys identify as doctors and, you know, you don't hear this shit about it. They, they don't practice. They run a TV show, but they have a doctorate. But generally, in 99.9% .9 of situations, saying I am a doctor is claiming your expertise. And therefore, there is a pre-existing societal expectation in fact, in our society, doctors literally have to take a vow. It's called the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath binds all medical professionals in our society. This is a totally separate structure to gender. It's a literally totally different concept. It is a claim about expertise, which we have various systems for verifying that expertise is true, including testing, including work requirements, literally not even the same thing. And he's actually answering it here without belief, without recognizing that he's answering it. Fashion as a doctor. But if I say, I'm a woman, I'm a man, I am non-binary, that's how I identify, what does that mean? It means that's referring to your internal perception and identity of yourself in regards to masculinity, femininity, or a rejection of both. So that is basically my- Okay, and so somebody who says that I use tree-tree pronouns or says that I'm tree gender is expressing their rejection of both. W right? He never even touches this. He just ignores it. He's just so mad and so lost in his feelings for six months, by the way, over six months, been raging about this. His emotions, his fifis have been so hurt that he felt it necessary to make a video like this where he doesn't even think about the thing that he's so mad about. My opinion when it comes to gender, and I've been thinking this out a lot. Uh, no, you fucking it's... haven't. No, you fucking haven't, bro. If this is the best thought that you have, if six months and this is all you've got, you need to fucking, you need to seriously analyze your ability to be a commentator on this sort of thing. It's noticeable that I put thought into this. I am not just jumping on here saying, haha, xenogenders cringe, lol, lol, lol. No, I actually think that they are unironically. Actually, that's literally what you did. You did that when you posted this video and you just did it again the other day, you just called them stupid and illogical without an argument. Basically, you pulled a fucking Ben Shapiro. You went on and went, you know, it's just a, everybody can tell. Everybody can tell and then says a racist thing that this thing is true. You don't even have to, you don't even have to look into it. You can just think about it and you can see with your own eyes. That's what Hunter just did. Hunter just literally logged on and called a bunch of people who have never harmed him at all cringe without ever thinking about it. No, no, we're not finishing the rest of this video. The rest of this video is him just sort of like flying off the handle at some video about gender and then he debates a trans person at the end. We're not watching that shit. Uh, I think this basically, uh, oh yeah, yeah, Fortnite brings up, did you see that he had a two hour debate with his wife over xenogenders? Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of people have mentioned that. I did not know that he got in like a literal, uh, uh, like a down and out argument with his wife over it because his wife disagreed with him. I also saw his wife uh, disagreeing with him on Twitter again as well. So apparently they haven't worked it out either uh, between them. Oh boy.
Wah, what a mess. So, of course, uh, Hunter's argument is is completely bullshit, but it's especially bullshit that he's trying to sell you that argument while claiming to be a gender abolitionist, while uh, also, you know, jumping on board with a, a, a dogpiling harassment campaign against my partner, while also just actually contributing directly by calling uh, anybody who identifies differently than he wants them to, uh, stupid, illogical, invalid, all the other things that he did. And and quite frankly, it's bog standard conservative stuff that he's given a very, very lazy progressive paint, uh, coat of paint. Uh, I don't really uh, care much for Hunter Avalon anymore. As I said in the very beginning, I gave this motherfucker a long, long, long leash as far as I'm concerned politically. Uh, I gave this guy so much charitability. He had I, everything from like me just avidly supporting him, trying to make sure, literally coaching him. He like literally used arguments that I gave him against Lauren Southern, uh, which, hey, good job against Lauren Southern, bro, but I wish you would apply that level of effort to, you know, thinking before you jump on board to try and bully a minority of a minority of people online just because you personally don't understand. Uh, it's, <laughs> is our Zeno gender so powerful it puts a rift in a marriage? Yeah. Naomi says, have you seen Vosh's take on Xenogenders? I have, uh, uh, at least I've seen some of his takes on Xenogenders and most of the time uh, he just seems, I mean, but this is because Vosh is actually like, Vosh actually generally understands gender. Vosh actually understands what a gender abolitionist position is. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe like maybe like a, a year ago or two years ago, Vosh had a different position. But from my position, Vosh has always been, uh, had a pretty solid grasp on the idea of gender abolitionism. And Vosh has been a pretty principled gender abolitionist for some time. I don't know about his system takes. I don't really know about that. That's not exactly directly tied to this. Uh, so yeah, uh, dude, just shut the fuck up, man. You sound like an idiot. You look like an asshole. I know that he's been going on a blocking spree, which to me just indicates that he's sort of chosen his path, that he's just like, I'm gonna be the like, re like, the, the like reactionary liberal now. I'm just gonna like get really mad over things that I don't understand. But you know, as to, to like move away from H Hunter Avalon himself and talk about the topic at large, first off, xenogender people aren't hurting anyone at all. They're not, there are not even that many xenogender people uh, out there. And the worst thing that you will see is somebody saying like, I use tree tree pronouns. They're not hurting anybody. They're not hurting anyone at all. There's no reason to act as though, I, I should say, there's no reason to lie and say that xenogender people are harming the trans movement. Uh, when we all know who's harming the trans movement, it's conservatives, it's Republicans, it's Christians. These are the people who are hurting trans people. They hurt trans people and they hurt xenogender people who are usually trans all the same. They don't care, they don't discriminate, they target both of them. Sometimes conservatives will pick on somebody and use them as a bludgeon by which to harm other people, but they do this all the time. Conservatives are fucking terrible. Conservatives are threatening to literally strip away all the freedoms that we know in lieu of a Christian fucking theocracy. Is that really the bar that we're gonna have here? Is that really it? Xenogender people aren't hurting anybody. Xenogender people uh, are perf fit perfectly within any rational or in intelligent model of, of, of being non-binary. Uh, it's so obvious to me. It's just like, I don't know how you can say like non-binary. You can identify that non-binary is a thing, but then you can be mad about people being non-binary. Like, unless you actually believe in like a pseudo trinary where well i should say if we're going to talk about hunter specifically hunter obviously makes an argument for a binary in the video as i explained but there are a lot of people who are like yeah non-binary people are valid it's the third thing not there's no they don't actually ever d dive into what it means to be non-binary it's just male female and the third one 
But that's not what being non-binary is. Non-binary isn't entering into a trinary. It's saying that these systems are a terrible, terrible way for us to live, and I'm not going to live that way. Hot and Deep Hat says, uh, many people will say this gives ammo to the conservatives, but I would respond, you are giving them the, the ammo. Yeah, exactly. You notice that? That like Hunter's, the, the core, the like justification for Hunter's argument is that this is going to be bad and give ammunition to conservatives. This is going to hurt the trans movement. Yet he's the one making the video on it. He's the one lighting these people up and doing it again after six months. It's literally just, what the fuck, man? You are the problem. You are the one doing the problem right now. Yeah, exactly. Fortnite says Hunter ends up in when Hunter plays this role, he plays the role of one of the good ones to conservatives. And of course, let's not forget. Let's not forget the whole Keffel's doxing incident. Let's not forget the participating and jumping on board a massive harassment campaign uh, against my partner bit. Let's not forget all of the ways in which Hunter Avalon has displayed that he is the online left's fucking village idiot. Doesn't he understand that his position on xenogenders could lead to the targeted harassment of xenogenders? That's the goal. That's the goal. That's what he's doing. When he says, when he makes a tweet being like, xenogenders are stupid and neo pronouns are illogical. These things are invalid. You're stupid. When he goes on a rant about somebody who didn't do him any harm. By the way, when he did this video, when he said the vamp vamp thing, the person who, used, who uses vamp vamp pronouns, uh, that's a specific person he's referring to. He's signaling to his audience to go, to, to, to be mad at a specific person. Now, that in and of itself doesn't constitute a harassment campaign, but when you combine it with months of relitigating this, months of reigniting the fire, it starts to build into something like that, doesn't it? There's another thing, okay? People like Hunter like to talk about being like not politically correct. They, they like to talk about not being like, you know, they speak it like it is. You are, you're not being a, you're not being punk rock. You're not cool by randomly picking on people that you don't understand. You're not cool by choosing like the smallest percentage of people on the planet who aren't doing any harm to anyone and like, just like grinding your finger down on them for fun. That is in fact, like, it is politically incorrect to be the one who defends that. These people, uh, uh, the people, the people who defend against that, I should say, not defend that, who should defend against that. People who are willing to say, hey, those people aren't hurting you. They're not doing anything wrong. They're challenging gender in their own way. Shut the fuck up. That's politically incorrect. That's called having a fucking spine. I really fucking hate that there's a lot of fucking people online who basically um, get the idea in their heads that like what made George Carlin n politically incorrect was that he was mean. They think that like being politically incorrect means that you're mean to people, that you treat people badly, that you don't have consistent morals. When in truth, that's not what it is at all. It's not rebellious or revolutionary or cool to just be an asshole for no reason because you don't understand something.